Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. and I was born July 4th, 1986. Today, I want to read something, a little something. Pretty sure I read it before. Just want to read it again. Because something that really has been put a lot of thought in me this past couple of days. Just reading, reading a lot of this has really got me thinking in a way of like, there's no, there's no one in this book that's lived a complete, satisfied life that God is looking for in reality. Like they themselves may have, but they never were able to complete it because their kids messed it up. Because their kids went away from doing what they were supposed to and or they themselves, they went away, didn't do what they were supposed to, or they were just tragically killed and never was able to, to live a full life. So it's really been putting a lot of thought in me of like, we're up against, in reality, an impossible task out here being on this planet. An impossible task of doing exactly what it is that God is looking for us, for us to do. An impossible task that no matter how many times he tells us to live by his laws and live by his, his commands, that there's just no one that's done it so far, at least in this Bible, in this book. And then when I really come to think about it, I just look at the world and see how the world works. We, we, it's an impossible task to do such a thing. So it, it, it kind of makes me think a little bit like, it being basically an impossible task of, well, why would you set the system up to be that no one can actually do it all? Why would the system be created that way? Why would the system be made that no matter how hard we try, no matter what we, uh, Oreo, hold on, no matter what we do, no matter how hard we, we stick by his commands and, and live a, a holy, righteous life, no matter how hard we try to actually do that, you're never gonna, you're never gonna be able to do it. You're never gonna make it. You're never going to be able to, to be that one that's, that's just done it. And, and someone would say to me that Jesus was perfect, but I'm going to say that he just never was able to live a life. He was, he was killed very brutally in a very savage, just disturbing way. That he, he wasn't able to just live. At the moment that he got up and started going and talking and preaching to people, the people wanted to just, just kill him. The people wanted to get that all out of the planet. We're going to get rid of the one because we want to keep the millions of us to, uh, uh, that we have under control to be under control. We can't let that one shine and grow and, and do what it does. We got we to gotta shut that down. That was their main, their main thinking behind what it is that they did. It wasn't even the fact that he said that he was God or anything like that. They were just trying to find a reason to, to get the guys to, to, to be able to authorize the, the killing of them. So they were trying to come up with all kinds of lies and trickery to just say, ah, see, there it is. That, that, that's worthy of being able to put to death now. But in reality, they, they just they wanted to stop that guy because they wanted to be able to keep on doing, they Pharisees, people, human beings, the people, the human beings, the people of the law, the people of the books, the people that, that are studying all this, were, wanted to shut that down because they didn't want for that person to take their audience and their peoples. And it's something interesting that, I don't know, I just noticed that, like, churches today do that. It, it goes on like that, especially in, like, certain organizations are, are very, very, very manipulative with stuff like that, that if you decide to leave, they're going to cut you off from everything. If you decide to talk back, they're going to slander your name on everything. You, you, and it's something that you're just, you're just stuck in. As soon as you decide to go in it for 15 minutes, as soon as you try to get out of it, you're just nothingness into all those people. And then if you've got anything to say, I'm saying anything to say back about it, be ready. Some, some very, very damaging things are going to keep on coming to you from human beings because they don't want you to go out there and try to get others to get away. They want to make sure that they can keep all the people and keep them satisfied with what it is that their lives are about. So it's very interesting that the more I keep on reading this book, the more I keep on realizing that there's no one that's just satisfied what God is looking for. So then it makes me think like, what's the point? Why would there be a system set up that no one was able to be able to do? That you, you, you would fail and fail and fail and need to keep on in, in the early days. You, you'd have to keep on. But in reality, something that I'm going to say right here, right now, that I still haven't been able to 100% verify is the whole animal, animal sacrifice thing. There's not a time where it's like we don't do that anymore because in reality, that's part of the laws. And if Jesus saying that we still, I didn't come to get rid of laws, uh, to, to push the laws and keep the laws, it's animal sacrifice and grain sacrifice and fellowship sacrifice and all these sacrifices are, are, are part of those laws. So it, 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 could, it puts me in a trickery of, I understand that uh, Jesus died for our sin, but what about our guilt? 
What about our, our everything else with that? That there's like different things going on here. That sin is kind of like a, a umbrella word, but then there's other little things underneath that. That I don't know. It's a very interesting thing. That we're living on this planet. That every single time we mess up, that we got to go to Jesus and pray to Him to to ask for forgiveness so that we can be able to go again. And then Jesus has to be there because we are guaranteed to mess up. We, we are guaranteed to not be successful doing what it is that we need to do. Guaranteed. We're guaranteed to fail. It's just a 100% guarantee that, that you're going to fail at trying to live by the commands and the laws that God has placed for us to be able to do. So then that's why we have Jesus to be able to, to save us. I've been thinking a lot lately. Not just thinking a lot, but I've been reading a lot of this Bible like just a little too much maybe. <laughs> Maybe I need to put it down a little bit because the more I keep on reading and rereading and going through and rereading some things, it, it opens up more and more, more, more questions that I just keep on going all over the place that I'm no longer just like, yep, nope, there it is. I'm like, oh, what, what, wait a second. But I understand that. But now there's like uh, different ways of being able to get there and do it. It, It's very, very fascinating. And I wonder how many other people have such interesting questions that I don't know. I just can't, I can't seem to find anybody talking about certain things that, that I'm starting to, to, to stumble into, to, to think about. Knowing that, you're going to fail. We're all going to fail. We're all short of being able to do what it is that God is looking for us to do on this planet. And in a way, that's kind of like very depressing. Knowing that, no matter what you do, you're not going to succeed. So it's like starting any sort of project. Let's just break it down to a video game. You start playing a video game that you know you will not be able to complete it. You're going to fail 100% of the times. Would you even start it? Would you even play it? Would you even try to try to be like, no, I'm better, I know more, but then you're going to just keep on failing and failing and failing and failing and never being able to succeed? Would, would you play that game? Or would you back out and get out of that game? It's a very interesting uh, uh, concept to think about in reality, knowing that no matter what you do, you're not, you're not going to be able to make it. But the one thing that would happen in this game is you're going to play it and you're going to fail, and then you got a, a reset button that you push to try it again and a reset button, and that reset button is, say, Jesus. You got a reset to start over to try again, to start over to try it again, but you're never, ever going to be able to, to, to make it. You're never going to be able to, to be able to be the one that's just complete, complete the game to satisfaction. You, you, you're never going to make it. You're never, you're never going to make it. You know, it'd be something that I'd, I'd, I'd imagine being Probably, I don't know why, but just my opinion of what I'm going to say right now. I would think that one of the most frustrating things on this planet, one of probably the most absolute frustrating things on this planet, is, I would say the same between male and female, but I think more on the woman's side, that I think that the, probably one of the most frustrating things is to want to have a child and then not being able to do such a thing. Like having something in you that, that stops you from being able to, to do that. That you could have had some medical thing happen to you at the age of five. That you, you were planning on having a child and for some reason your parents didn't tell you about it or explain it fully to you. You, you knew the whole scope of what was going on, but the doctor said to, to you, and you didn't know, you five, and you had a medical thing that happened and, and you are never ever gonna be able to have a child. And then one day you decide, you know, I wanna have a kid. You know, you're finally 23 years old and you're like, I wanna have a kid. And, and, or you're, you're 20 years old and trying to find a, a husband and then you get married, you're 23 years old, trying to have a child and you're trying and trying, you're doing everything you can. And then you're like, it must be him, something's going on with him. So then he's going, gets all these tests and these tests come back and say, he's good to go. Like, I don't know what's going on. So you just keep trying and trying and trying. And then finally you go in to get checked out and the doctor says and looks at you and says, man, this isn't gonna happen. They didn't tell you what they did to you as a child. You don't have this and you don't have that and you can't do this and you can't do that. And now you're not able to do it. But you were trying so hard and you had in your mind that you were, you were going to be able to complete this goal, be able to have this. And then it just came down to the fact that you can't, you can't do it. It's an impossible thing for you to do. Like you'll never be able to do it. You're never going to be able to have the chance. You're just going to run into the scenario that you're trying and trying and hoping and wishing and praying and going and just it's going to fail every single time. That has to be probably... One of the most frustrating things, I would believe, to be on this planet, to be able to have to do. You know, you're trying to try to get a car or a house and you don't get it. That, that's one thing. But to be able to bring life, 
your own, from you, from yourself. Not being able to do such a thing is, it's, that's, that's devastating. And, and, and that's a way of just certain things where I look at in this world of thinking like, we're, we're never going to be able to, to be what it is that our God is looking for us to be able to do. And we're always going to have to keep on going to that reset button to try again and try again and try again. Just keep failing. No matter how good and holy and righteous you try to be, you're, you're going to stumble. You're going to fail. You're not going to make it. You're not going to be able to do it. It just, it's, it just makes you wonder, like, what are we doing? What, what, are, what is it that we're doing out here? If what our purpose is, is to live by the commands, to live by the laws, to be able to get close to be able to worship, be able to praise God, that we're unable to do, then what are we doing? It's a very interesting stuff that I've been thinking about this past few days. It just really, really put it in me to just really start to, I don't know why, but it makes me want to read even more and more and more and, and more and more and continue to keep on reading and continue to keep on asking questions and continue to keep on doing searches and be able to, be able to find some questions for the answers that I'm, that I'm, that I'm trying to put out there. But I, I, I don't know what it is, but it's almost like a lot of stuff that I like to talk about is, say, controversial to people. Well, they're like, well, we don't talk about that. And it just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense at all because if, if it's controversial, how are you going to be able to get the clarity and through the, the sticky situations if you're, if you're not able to talk about it or if you want to talk about it? And I, I, the one thing that I do notice is certain people that you say, ask certain questions and they get, they get angry. They get really, really mad at you. Like you're, like you're attacking God or something in some way. And it's just like, dude, calm down, relax. It's okay. And that's another thing of just letting me know and gives me another reminder of we're all going to fall short. So then it just really makes me think like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? And then when I read and reread and keep on reading and I really start to dial in about the whole who the book is for and, and everything like that, it just, it just really gets in me of, of hearing and reading Jesus' words say. You know, I'm here for the Israelites. I'm not here for everybody else. So he was here for a specific group of people, which is kind of interesting. I was going to say funny because it is funny to me because based on reading this book, like they need that. <laughs> they, they need a savior. They need an outlet. They need a way to be able to allow God to be able to give them another day. Because of how many times and over and over they just keep failing. They just keep, keep, just keep messing up over and over and over and over. And consistently, every, I'm telling every single story that you read in this book, it, it doesn't end with a happy ending. It always ends with they did good for a little bit and then they turned to wickedness. They, their wickedness and then they pleaded for help and then they turned good for two years and then they went to wickedness. It's just over and over. So, of course, they need a savior because they can't function. They can't do. They can't, they can't get anything. They can't make anything happen. They can't keep it. It's not sustainable. They can keep it for a week or two, maybe a year or three, at the most 40 years. And then it just goes right back into just, just madness, madness. And then it gets worse every time. At the beginning, it's like they grumbled a little bit and backslid. And, and then, and then they, they, they got back in it. But it, it gets worse and worse that it, it goes way off the deep end way off. It was like, of course they need a savior. Of course they need someone to come in and step in because because God is just watching you just just stumble and fumble. And he's like, <laughs> that's the best way I could put it. It's like a video game. God's like, I'm tired of you losing all your lives and not being able to have a chance. I want you to at least be able to ha have this unlimited chance, which is weird because it's like, that's what we do today in our schools and our sports. I've been watching this on the Olympics. The Olympics is some serious stuff, especially uh, I'm a track and field guy. And uh, it's some serious stuff. And nowadays, they're like, oh, we, we'll give two gold medals. To, w when you have a high jump, I think the high jump was one of them. Anna Polvo was one of them. They got to a point that they were going, and they both did that one. And they're like, you guys are both, we, we, gotta, we can keep going, or you guys could both get a gold medal. And they're like, we'll both we'll, we'll take the gold medal. Like, what is going on with us? That there's a winner. And there's a loser. There's one that succeeds and there's one that doesn't. And the one that's pushing harder is the one that's going to be able to make it. And the one that doesn't is the one that just doesn't. That to say to himself, I'm going to try harder next time. But we, our whole society has been a participation award. Everybody gets it. Everybody just, you just show up and you get it. But th that's not a, a good message to send to another human being because you're, you're going to set them up for absolute failure. You're going to set them up for failure in a way that they're going to think that all I got to do is just be here and I'm going to be able to get what that person has, even though that person is actually working and doing really hard. 
It's, it's, it's very, very interesting because when you think about it, that's the concept of who Jesus is for the Israelites. He's like, you just show up and you'll be good to go. You, you, you mess up and, 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 and I'll be here to, to forgive you over and over. As long as you forgive and forget and move forward and go ahead and I'll, I'll be here for you. You'll you always be able to get it. It's almost like a horrible human being life lesson to give is knowing that you can mess up and you've got something to be able to just get you out of that. I don't know. That's, that's, that's some sticky situation, confusing stuff to me. The more and more I keep reading this, the more and more I'm realizing, like, the Israelites, y'all, the, they, in this Bible, they need some serious help. Some serious help. The other people out there is probably doing some weird and crazy stuff and who knows what because it doesn't really go into detail about what everyone else is doing, but they need some help. They're begging for it. They're crying for it. And in reality, they have no, they have, this is, this is going to sound messed up, but it, it's just facts in reality. If you read, the, you read the text, they need God's help because they are incapable of doing for themselves. They're incapable of actually fighting against the people that they were taking the land from. They're incapable of fighting against any, any of their enemies that came in and enslaved them because they were being disobedient. So God brought them in. They're incapable of, they didn't have warriors. They didn't have, they didn't have no fighting. They, they didn't have no, they didn't have nothing. So they had to have God do miracles for them or they wouldn't be able to have. So it's a very interesting uh, situation because then it makes it seem like, not seem like, it makes it is that the people need something to, to move others so that they could be able to have. Not that they were actually working and doing anything to be able to have. They were just alive and were able to just have. And the others around are working hard. They're building up their walls. They're building up their fortresses. They're building up their weaponry. They're building up their army. They're training. They're working. They're slaving. They're getting stuff done. They had these huge, amazing armies. These, this huge, stuff, awesome thing. These big chariots with all the, all the horses training the animals and doing what they're doing to get everything that they need. They're out there working. And they're out there just able to conquer because they, they've been working. But yet you got some people that haven't been working. They've been just sitting back complaining and just grumbling about we don't have no water, we don't have no food, we don't have this, we don't have that, we can't this and we can't that. And then God comes in and <clears throat> he's got he's to move out these people that are working and digging deep and, and putting in a lot of work, like serious work. And he's got to move them out of the way to let these grumbling, doing nothing type guys move in. It's, it's such an interesting situation that the more and more I keep on reading this Bible, it really just, it really, it really makes me question a whole lot about what exactly God is. Because it, it still states that it's not that God was giving them the land because they were a good, better people. It, it, it was because the people that were there were more wicked. And more wicked, we don't know exactly what it is that they were doing and what it is that they were about. The reason on why, why that had to happen. But, but the Israelites were never able on their own because they would try it and they would fail 100% of the times to go out there without the help of God to be able to get them to be able to do what, they, what it is that they do. They have to have 100% of the time God do move, make stuff happen so that they were able to conquer and be able to, to win the battles that they were in. If they didn't have God, they lost every time. They would just get slaughtered. They would run away scared and oh my goodness, we don't know what's going on. And then they'll pray and pray, God, please help us. And then they'll go back and then they'll win. It's very interesting that we're, we're allowing the people, the way, the way this text is written, we're allowing the people that aren't doing much of anything but hanging out, be able to take from those that are actually doing the work and doing the most and making it all happen. It's a very, very interesting situation that goes on here because in reality that is, again, not such a great life lesson to be able to teach people. And that puts people in such a way that makes them feel entitled is, I, I guess, the, the main way of saying it. And I, and I could see that entitlement in some people when they stand up on the corner preaching the message of Jesus and God and say that we're the, we're the real Israelites and no one is that we're going to take all of your stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's constantly happening in this Bible, that they never built any cities. They never built any anything. They, they would just take what was already built. They're, they're going to come in because it's stated like that. I read that like four or five times today that. They're gonna they're gonna live in houses that they didn't build. They're gonna live in have vineyards vineyards that they never they never dug. They're gonna have pasture fields that they never they never did any work with. They're gonna, they're gonna have walls that they that they never built. They're just gonna take over someone else's stuff. That did all the, they did all the work and they're gonna come in and just take it all, and then they take it all. And then the reason that they don't be able to stay in it is because they become disobedient to God, because again they're on a off 
lose-lose situation that they're not ever going to be able to do. They're never going to be able to succeed at what it is that God is looking for from them. So then they end up getting enslaved. And then someone takes over their stuff. So now they may stay living in the same spot, but now they're enslaved by someone else. Now they're pleading and begging 30 years later, say, we need to get out of this. And then they just, it's just a cycle that keeps going over and over and over again, over and over. All the way to the point of the, the one guy, Solomon, David's son, and built the Built, 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 built the, the magnificentness of the magnificentness. Built, built just, just the best of the best. Gold on gold on gold. The way they talk about the gold was like you could literally just walk around and find a chunk of it. And just there it is. And there, it's just everywhere. It's just a, it's an unlimited resource. The way they talk about gold and how they were building this temple and his house and all this stuff. But then it just makes me question like, hold on, but there, there's, there's laws that say, state that the king and, and the ruler and all that is not supposed to be a collector of, of golds and collector of chariots and it's supposed to be a humble person that's that's and so there's a lot of that that I'm gonna say is if I would say that there's any sort of contradiction in this Bible that's where I would say that there is one the fact of these kings collecting and having and this guy having 700 wives and 300 side girls and, and collecting all this stuff and having all this stuff that's that's a law that they're not supposed to be doing and, and I want to say maybe a contradiction, but it's just something more to state that there's not a single person in this Bible that has done what it is that God is looking for. Not a single one. Not a single one. Not one. Not one. Not, not one human being has been able to fulfill what it is that these laws state for us to be able to do. And when I hear that and read that and understand that, it just makes me kind of get in the way of like, I'm in a losing situation. And if I'm in a losing situation, What's the best route for me to be able to have the best life and being able to make sure that I'm at least aware of what it is that I'm sinning against and, and not doing right? That I, I want to at least be aware of it so that when I do it, I can just ask for forgiveness and move forward. But the things that I'm unaware of is, is, is some, some I, I don't know, it's very interesting because I know for 100% fact that I'm going to fail. 100% fact, I'm not going to be able to be up to what it is that God is looking for. And, and, that's a, that's a very interesting thing because it just, it kind of almost, I could see how it can make someone in their mind say, well, I don't care then. Why would I try so hard to, to stick with 98, 99% of it? Because just 1% of it would allow me to be, get rejected from God. Each, all sin is, is sin. It's detestable to God. And, and, and it's, it's not a matter of you murdering someone or, or slandering somebody. It, it, if you're slandering, you're still... Un unacceptable to God and you're still not in his good graces so it's like you you would get it in you just thinking like I, I don't I don't want I don't want I'm not going to deal with any of that I'm not going to do any of that and that's an interesting thing because that's that's kind of like the majority of what I would say the other people outside of the Israelites where the storyline is kind of just talking about where the other people may have gotten into their minds of thinking that way of like what the heck is the point if we're never going to be able to succeed at this we're always going to fail why, why would we even want that, God? Why would we even want to work with that? Why would, why would I do that knowing that I'm going to have to continue to keep on sacrificing all these animals, killing these animals, and killing these animals, and killing these animals, just to try to get God to, to give us another day or another week or another month and then another year and, and keep doing this? They're like, let's go ahead and just do something different because we're never going to be able to be satisfied to him. We're always going to be on the short end of the stick with him. So it's just like... Why, why are we doing this? I don't know, it's just some interesting, interesting stuff to think about when I really start to dig deep with understanding the, 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 the situation, the, the peoples, and especially when someone would say to me like an Edomite, that they're, they're, those are like all white people. But I'm just like, dude, but he married Egyptians, he married Canaanites, he married Hittite women, he, 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 he married and had children with a lot of brown people. And when you mix a white person with a brown person, like a brown person comes from that again. And, and then you just keep going and going and going. And then you go watch the kids and the grandkids and seeing who they married and what was going on. So it's like, I don't know what's going on with that. Some people I think are very, very confused of thinking that you're superior because of your color. And, and then you got in, you're thinking that you're superior because of your color. And then this God is your God for you. But I'm gonna tell you right here that you're in a lose-lose situation. Because you're never going to be able to be up to what it is that God is looking for for you to do. I don't care how much you study. I don't care how much you read. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how, how much you do anything. You're never going to be able to be amount up to what it is that God is looking for from us. 
So it's a, it's a very interesting dilemma that, that, that makes you really think a lot about what it is that we're doing. I don't know, it's just something, something super interesting that I've just been reading this and just been thinking a lot. Because I want to read here in the book of Jeremiah, in the seventh chapter, the 22nd verse. For when I brought your ancestors out of Egypt and spoke to them, I did not just give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I gave them this command, obey me and I will be your God and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you that it may go well with you. But, if, but they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubborn inclinations of their evil hearts. They went backwards and not forward from the time your ancestors left Egypt until now, day after day, again after again, I sent you my servants, the prophets, but they did not listen to me or pay attention. They did, they were stiff-necked and they did more evil than their ancestors. When you tell them all this, they will not listen to you. When you call to them, they will not answer. Therefore, I say to them, this is the nation that has not obeyed the Lord, its God, or responded to correction. Truth has perished and has vanished from their lips. This is, this is just, I don't know. I used to read this and think like, oh, think one thing about it. But then I, I really started to just, just understand the, the timelines of things here. You know, when you're just reading a passage, you're not understanding like what was going before, what's at, the whole situation, the whole timeline. There's, there's a lot more when you figure out like, the beginnings and, and the people and the, the kids and, and everything to, to understand where we are. And where we are in this is, is very, very close to in reality when, when Jesus is to come back because it's very, very close. So that means that we've been living for thousands of years and have never been able to get right. For thousands of years, the evil that's in us has always taken over and consumed. That we've never ever been able to get right and be right and stay right, never. We've always backslid. We have always being stubborn, we're always being stiff-necked. Never able to get to the point that we're finally in a situation that we're, we're just, we're, we're smooth sailing and doing what it is that we're, we're supposed to be doing. And that just makes me really think about the whole idea of something that I said to somebody a while ago of, of I think that when I read this, and especially with certain words in there, I think that our main purpose on this planet and the reasoning why we need to pay attention to the commands that God has given us is because we are born so evil, so wicked, that we have to figure out how to get away from that and how to get out of that. Because that is just what consumes us and takes us and takes over. That the more and more that we get away from the commands, the more we start to do just crazy stuff. And, and the more that that crazy stuff is going to start to affect other people, not just only yourself. And, and I think that, I don't think that, I know that. That's the main reason why in the beginning, when one person would mess up, that the whole camp would, would get, get, get punished for it. Because that one person is able to just to, to mess up way more than just themselves. It's, it's a life lesson to us to, of realizing that if you're struggling, you yourself, you're going to make everyone else around you struggle because of your struggle that you're going to put and project all of your negative, evil energy on everyone else around you. And it's not only just you, that you've got to be able to get out of it. That's something that I've know, known in 100% with my life when I rethink about it, that me living in such a wicked way has made everyone else around me experience and have to feel something about me. I, I'm going to pretty much guarantee and state that anybody that's known me, you, you, you're, you're going to say something wild about what it is that I've done to you at some point in your life. You're just like, I don't agree with that. Like that, that really hurt me. And, and I was hurting and I was, I was messed up. I wasn't wanting anyone else in the rest of the world to hurt and mess up, but I was. And since I was, I was putting that out there and everyone around me was getting destroyed. So it was for me at that time to remove myself. That's what I said to myself. I'm removing myself and I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to be around anybody. I'm not going to communicate to anybody. I'm going to take the short end of the stick and just, just separate me because I'm the one that's causing a lot of issues going on out here. And then I did that and I was like, okay, now I realize that it's not all me, that we all have these issues and we're, they're bleeding out to everybody. That no matter what I do, there's someone else that's still trying to do that same thing because of the evil that's inside of them. 
that they're also doing that to me. So we're just butting heads with our evil back and forth and we're not getting anywhere. We're not getting anywhere at all. And that's, that's where the concept of, I just have a very good understanding of our whole life, purpose, mission, is to get out of that evil. And for you to sit there and think that I'm not evil, I'm a good person. And that's where if you're reading that Bible and you know it, you're not. You're not. And Jesus even says that you're not. Jesus, Jesus himself, a perfect human being, says he's not good. So how the heck are you as a, a, that's a good way of saying it, compared to Jesus, a traditional human being, how are you a good person if Jesus being God is not a good person? So something that we all should put more thought into, more, more understanding with, of realizing that we're so evil, we're so wicked, and we're always wanting to go right back to that, that we, we got to have the commands of God to be able to help us to be able to stay away from that. And the more and more that we keep on working on that, the more and more we're going to get away from it and stay from it. But if we're, we're constantly going towards it and staying in it and going towards that evil and getting off the commands, it's going to consume all of our world and destroy us, and not only us, but everyone around you. Everyone around you you're going to have issues with. And that's, that's the whole thing of getting out of that to be able to get to God. And the closer you are you're to God and the more you're on your commands, the more that you're going to run into the situation of, Yes, I messed up a little bit, and now I'm going to be able to get back on it to be able to move forward. Yes, I messed up, I slipped up here, and now I'm going to be able to, to, to move forward. But there's never going to be a day that you're just, you're, you're perfect and good to go. It's every day that we have to keep on working on that over and over and over again. Every single day, every moment, every second that you're awake, and even when you're asleep. I'm noticing some things that even being asleep. And I don't know about you guys, but when, when I'm sleeping, I, I know what I'm dreaming about. I know what I'm doing. I know what's going on. I know that I'm asleep. I know that what's going on is the difference. And I don't know if, if, if that's how it's supposed to be or not, but that's just what I've noticed. When I'm dreaming, I know I'm dreaming. I know that that's not real. So I stay in it and I do different stuff because I know it's not real. I literally will jump and fly and do weird stuff because I know it's not real. I'm like, I could do this here. This is simple. And, and I, I do that every single day, especially if I take a good nap when I'm exhausted. Like, I, I'm literally doing things that are just very, very strange because I know it's not real. I know it's fake. But then I wake up and I'm back into the, the, the realness of here. And I'm just like, man, I got to the, the world is just hitting you. And you got to figure out how to be able to stay sane and stay getting to a better situation into a being a good person as opposed to just being so simple to go to the bad stuff because the bad stuff is just who we are. It's all, what we're all about. It's, it's just what's normal. It's what's natural. It's, it's something that they've done studies already on baby children. I'm talking like six months and below to see what they would do. They just do some, they just, I mean, I, I, I would almost guarantee that every single parent would say that and, and know that. that you've seen your baby, you've seen your child do something where you're just like, what the heck? Like, that was mean. Like, that's crazy. And, and, and I'm pretty sure that I would bet that 100% of parents, your kid has hit you, your baby. I'm not saying a five-year-old, they should have been past that already. But the reason they're not going to do it again is because when they do that to you, you're instantly like, no, 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 hands up. You're going to do something. But when the kid is two months old and is throwing hands at you, you're not, you're not, you're not thinking that it's, it's malicious. And, and you're looking at, oh, that's cute. Look, he's, he's, he's balling his fist up and just swinging at me. No, it's not cute. It's evil. And that's just what we are. We come from that. We're, we're always that. That we, we, we're, we're doing savage stuff all the time. And, and it's, it's depressing in a way to think about, but... It's exciting to realize the, the mission of being able to figure out how to be able to get away from that. And, and when the more and more that you get by the commands and get by the laws, the more and more that you're able to get away from that. And you're may, may able to get into something different. And that's where I have a very good understanding of why some people just have this like, I hate when they see certain people. Because there's certain people that are living by these commands. And, and, and you, there's a whole difference of a look to them. To the other person. The other person just, they, they feel so like just... They, they, their desires of everything that they, that they need is just, they're, they're, they're hurting. And then they see someone walking that's just like, like whistling and skipping. They're just like, I want to hurt that person. Because how are they happy? How are they satisfied? How are they just able to just be able to be calm? And it, it drives them insane. And, and, and that's why it's, it's easy to see in reality for me who, who's a Bible believer. I can see families right up front. I can see, I can knock on that door, look in there, and I can see what y'all's foundation is all about right away instantly. I can see it's it's like a it's 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 I don't want to use that word. It's like a it's just this, this essence, this 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 the the spiritual energy that's in there. You could just see a difference. You could see the layout of everything. You you could just see how, how you, I don't know how to explain it. You could just see a huge difference in households 
where you could tell what's going on here. You could tell that there's a leader in here, and there's 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 people there's and, and it's a solid leader. It's a good leader. It's not one that's being ruthless and being mean. Where you could go to other places and it's like, man, there's no leader in here at all. Like, what what's going on right now? What's happening? And that's because you're going more towards all just things of the flesh of all the evil, the the the, the nature of who we are. And we got to figure out how to be able to get out of that, to be able to find that discipline, to be able to find that structure, to be able to get what it is that we need to be able to understand who God is, to be able to give us the, the understanding of how to be able to live on this planet. Because how, living on this planet, we're always going to fail. We're going to fail 100% of the time. We're always going to fail. But since we're going to fail, we got to do everything we can to figure out how to make that as a minimum fail, as opposed to just going right back to some just crazy madness. And that's, that's, that's what I see is is when I think of a test and a challenge and why we're on this planet, that's the test of a challenge to get away from the evil that we are and move into being, trying to be a good person. Because being a good person is what God wants to surround himself around. He doesn't want people that are just disobedient, destructive, and chaos and unorderly, unorderly and just, 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 just maddening. God doesn't want that around. And he states that. He doesn't want that around. He wants people that are living by his commands around. And those are going to be good people, people that strive to do good, to try to be good. Even though they have inside of them just evil and destruction, they're trying everything in their power every day, every moment, all the time to do good stuff. God's like, I want that person around me. That's a powerful person to get away from who you are, to move into what it is that I'm looking for. God's going to open his hand. Come on, man. Come on, girl. Come on. Let's go this way. Leave all that alone, get out of that, we're going this way. It's a powerful thing to do such a thing. And that's something that I, I would want more people to think about when you're trying to have an understanding of what we're doing out here and what we are and who we are. Who we are is destruction and just chaos. And that's, I mean, just look around, drive anywhere you want, two or three hours around and just go around and you will find literal destruction and chaos. You'll find people just burning stuff down just, just because, for just, 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 just for the heck of it. You find people out there just, just killing animals just, just for fun, just for the heck of it, just to, hey, this is neat, let's go get a rifle and shoot that thing in its head and just watch it bleed out and die and think that's fun and exciting. That's, that's maddening, that's chaos. You watch people do that to other people. They just wanna fight them and just wanna beat them down all the time. Just, just chaos, everywhere you go, you will find such a thing. And what's going on on, on, on YouTube stuff today? That I don't know what's happening, but I have to like block everything now because it's chaos. It's like pranks, new pranks that are going on that are like, I'm going to break your phone or I'm going to, I'm going to throw water at you or I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just chaos, maddening. And we look at that and laugh at that and think it's fun. That is, that is just, that is getting inside of how evil you actually truly are. As opposed to seeing someone say, hey, you know, I see a homeless person there. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Hook up with an outdoor kitchen set up and start cooking right there. Put some eggs out there, get some hash browns going, and, and that's something to show. That's showing a, a goodness. But what we're showing today is just destruction and evil. It's funny to walk up to a stranger and take their phone and throw it on the floor. Huh, <laughs> that's funny. Look at that. That's chaos. That is just destruct. That is just disgusting. But we do that and think that that's fun and think that that's funny and think that that's okay. And that's where we're headed today, destruction. And we got to get out of that. And the only way to get out of that is to get on the commands of what God is looking for us to do. We're never going to be perfect. Never. Never going to be able to do it 100%. Never. But if you never even try, that's where you're going to always fail and you're going to stumble worse off than, than where you started. Because God doesn't want that around. He doesn't want that around. He gets rid of that. He states that over and over every single time. And his angels... His angels are, are not all just come down and just, oh, here you go, it's a magical thing for you. No, he's got angels that come down and just, that's, that's the story, I forget what book that's in, but it's stated again in the uh, uh, Second Chronicles. When he asks him, what, what do you want? You're going to get a disciplinary action. Three days of, of plague for me, uh, 30, 30 days or three months or three years. And the guy's like, we'll take the plague from God. And he's sending his angel down and he's out there just slaughtering with a sword, just slaughtering people. That's what God's angels are doing. They're not just this, this nice, it's serious. God doesn't want the disobedience around. He doesn't want the destruction. He doesn't want the evil around. And he created a system that we started off being perfect, but we failed on our own. And now we're here and have to figure out how to be able to get past that because of what some old people just did. It just is what it is. I didn't create this. I'm here. 
and I got to figure out how to be able to get to what it is that God is looking for from me. And how to be able to do that is to live by the commands that he's given us that I'm going to fail at every single day. But the more and more that I keep that on my mind, that's what he says, put it everywhere. Put it on your doors, put it on, on, on your walls, put it everywhere. Put it in your car, put it on your, next to your TV if you got one, put it in your shower, put, put it everywhere. Put, put his commands everywhere so that you can keep them on your mind all the time so that you can, you can get away from your evil intentions of what it is that we do. How we just steal a little bit just because it's, it, it's okay. No one would see it. it. No one would pay attention. No, it, it's wrong. It's, it's disrespectful. No, I could just talk, talk bad about that person sometimes here and there. No, it's wrong. It's not what we're supposed to do. But it's so easy to do that. And it being so easy should really just let you know who we actually truly are inside. That we're not actually looking out for the best of anybody. We're looking out for the best of ourselves. And when you're looking out for the best of yourself, you're going to do some, some wicked things to other people. Some wicked stuff. Because you're, you're trying to be able to get and be able to have. That's the, the idea of when, when, you, when you fill out a job application and, and you're, you're, you're doing your, uh, uh, what is that, your resume, you want all the other 500 people to fail because you want it. You do not want them to have a chance to be able to get it. So you're going to make yourself look better, do what you need to do so that you can have it. And you're going to wish ill will on all the rest of them and say, I hope all y'all fail because this is mine. That's just who we are. That's what we do. And you, you're going to show up on the line to, to, to be a runner, to do whatever you do. You're like, I hope all y'all fail. I'm about to win this one. That's what we do. I hope you trip. I hope you break your, your ankle before the soccer match. Because if, you're, if she's in it, then we won't have a chance. But if she's not in it, we, we might be able to win. I hope that she hurts herself. And that's actually just recently happened in the whole women's soccer thing. Like half the team was broke down, I heard. And it's almost like people are putting ill will upon that to make that happen. Because they want to win. And they'll do anything to win. That's how evil, oh, there's an owl. I'm pretty sure that's an owl. That's just so evil. That's so, so maddening. It's just destruction. And we're going further and further into that. The more and more I keep reading this book, the Bible, and seeing what, what it is out here. That's just, that's just what we do. That's what we're all about. And with that, I just want to say thank you for a very, another very challenging day but I'm just making it through and doing what I'm doing. And the way that I know how to get through some challenging times is to keep on reading the Bible and keep on uh, staying firm with learning and knowing more so that when someone else has some questions, maybe I can hopefully be able to have some sort of answers to be able to give you. Because I, I, I stumble upon a whole lot of questions myself. I don't just read something and look at something and just, just, just look at it just as is. No, there's more to it. And in everything, there's more to it. In every book that every person has ever written, there's more to what it is that they're saying than what, what it is that they actually just were able to put there. There's more to it. And, and, and thankfully, with the Bible, we've got uh, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit to be able to guide us, to be able to give us that more, to be able to give us more insight on how to be, the, the more that that's missing from there so that you can get more clarification. Because the Bible is so, it's so small. It's so small. It's so tiny. It's, 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 it's so short of a read that it can't possibly have everything that we need to know and, and, be, and just understand in that one small tiny book. It's so small compared to a lifetime. A lifetime, I could read it in a week's time. If, if I was really, really good, someone could read it in two or three days. The whole thing, two or three days of your entire life. I don't know how many days we have in our life living up to 100 years old, but that's what a, a 365,000, 100, I don't know. My math is, I'm not even thinking of numbers right now. But uh, it's not a lot. It's so tiny compared to all of our lives. I mean, even just put that into a month, two days into a month to read the whole book. That's, that's something that it's, it's so small. And with it being so small, we have to keep on praying and asking to find the more. And that's, that's for me today of realizing more of what we actually truly are. That I, I, I was kind of rejecting the fact of thinking that we, we are just disobedient evil people but in reality we just are and it's it's the work for us to get out of that and to fight against that we're not going to get out of it we, we who we are but it's our fight to be conscious say i don't want to do that i want to go do something different and that's the thing today for me to be very much so thankful for of being able to be aware that there's some evil stuff out here and in me and what to do to be able to get through it and be able to get out of it and be able to get past it Thank you.